everybody, and welcome to the Sound Arguments Podcast. Thanks for being here. No matter how you might have found the show, I'm glad that you're here, and I hope that you are ready to engage. Let's dive right in. we got a lot to talk about on this episode, so let's get right to it. I decided after the last episode about deconstructing the concept of individual ideology that there really needs to be a part two. So, I want to expand on our previous discussion by talking about two types of people. Those types of people are ideologues and ideological opportunists. Ideologues and ideological opportunists. And I think that we honestly have some great examples of those two types of people in our current uh, our, our current culture, our current political cycle, and we'll get to them in a minute. But first, I want to talk about why is it important to discuss these two different types of people. And to me, it's because they represent two ends of a spectrum that all of us should really be seeking to land somewhere in the middle of and be actively fighting to keep ourselves there, in my opinion. And I think that you'll best be able to understand that and why I believe that as we discuss my examples in a minute. But first, I think it'd be useful to define the terms. So building upon our definition of ideology from last episode, we defined it as our individual lens through which we see the world based upon our learnings and our experiences. Um, That's how we kind of said that, that that's where we form our individual ideology. So an ideologue is someone whose individual lens might as well be cast in concrete, right? It's reinforced with rebar, the whole deal, immovable object kind of a thing. It might be a little bit unfair to put this thought in your head, but I think, uh, I, I, I like to think anyway, of ideologues like old stubborn grandpas curmudgeonly telling you that something is the way that it is because that's the way it is, right? There's no real logical... You can't carry that out to a logical conclusion and, and determine that it's a sound argument. No, uh, no shame in, in plugging the show there, but that's how I that's how I think of it. So on the flip side, again, sorry for putting that idea in your head. It kind of sheds a negative light on uh, on ideologues, but that's just the way that I think of them. So on the flip side, we have ideological opportunists. For this, it's really important for us to distinguish these types of people, ideological opportunists in our heads as being apart and different from this other type of people. And and those type of people are, are someone who they seemingly have no solid piece of ideology upon which they stand without fail. Okay. So they have, it, it would, it would appear that they have nothing concrete about their ideology. And perhaps, you know, this type of person, they're sort of flaky, they seem to not want to upset the apple cart. They tend to just agree with you. Maybe they come into a conversation arguing for one point, but within one or, or two sound points that, that is presented by an opposing point of view, suddenly they've changed their minds, right? I want to call those people ideological nomads. And if it's something interesting enough to enough of you, maybe we'll talk about it further. But I want to differentiate because they, they may seem similar to ideological opportunists, but I think that in reality, um, they just, they just simply haven't done the intellectual legwork to know why they believe what they believe. And they don't know upon which opinions they're going to stand more firmly than others. Okay. So the opportunist, they are another thing entirely. And here's why to me, it's because they consciously believe that a lack of any firm and unshakable piece of ideology actually gives them some sort of a competitive advantage, so to speak. They see no value in holding any belief with any amount of conviction, and they use the prevailing winds of popular opinion to align their ideology to whatever they think is going to score them the most points in that particular moment. So those, to me, are the two ends of the spectrum that we are talking about when it comes to how we choose to use our individual ideology. One other point that I think it's really important to make is that this particular spectrum, the ideological spectrum, is a lot like the typical political spectrum that you see, which is actually, it's, it's presented more like a horseshoe shape with the far ends 
being actually closer to each other than they are to the midpoint. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about when I, when I say that. Um, I, personally, I think it's one of the more accurate depictions of the political slash ideological spectrum that I've seen. And to be honest, this is really where the conversation does begin to depart somewhat from the more philosophical arena of the last episode and start to enter into more of the political arena of things. And I think that that's because what we're talking about now is how this plays out practi- like in practicality. It's a little bit more of a pragmatic approach to ideology, and, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more in depth. So those are the two extremes. And I, I really think that they're actually quite close to one another. And I'll and I'll use my illust- I'll use my examples to illustrate why that is. So, to me, a good example of what an ideologue might look like that we are all familiar with in in today's culture would be Bernie Sanders. Now, before you go shutting the show off out of frustration, just hear me out, okay? I, I know ideologue is a word. That might come across as ugly. I put the old curmudgeonly grandpa picture in your head already. Um, so it, you might think that I, I'm arguing this from a standpoint of, of being biased. But I, but I really want you to hear me out. Okay, I say Bernie Sanders because if you look throughout his lifetime, he has stayed on message with his beliefs for a very, very long time. I was just on YouTube the other day and I saw a video. It was Milton Friedman who was an economist and professor. He won a Nobel Prize in 1976, I think it was. He just died maybe 10 years ago. Uh, Anyway, if if you don't know who he is, I would definitely recommend looking him up. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put a link to that video that I'm talking about in the description. But it was a video of Milton Friedman giving a lecture on a college campus, and a young Bernie Sanders was in the audience posing him some questions. And the point that Bernie was trying to make, even back then in the 1970s, is that our system is unfair and it takes freedom away from people who are poor. So people who are poor don't have freedom, It was was his point. And and he thinks that by definition that is un-American. Liberty and justice for all means that liberty and justice for all, no matter of your, your, your socioeconomic standing. So we can argue the debate and the nuances of that claim that he's making in a later show. And feel free to weigh in on that on Twitter and Gab. But the point is, Bernie Sanders has been standing on the same ideology for more than 40 years. Probably 50 or 60, if we're being honest. Unchanging. Absolutely. In in where he stands. And while there's something to be argued about possibly perceiving that as noble or righteous or something like that, in this exchange with Friedman... He was being confronted with sound arguments. Again, no no shameless self-promotion intended. But honestly, Friedman's argu- arguments were they were logically sound. And yet there was no meaningful discourse to come out of the exchange. And, and Bernie's were logically sound too, in, in, in all honesty. But no concessions were made on either side. I'm, I'm sure that Bernie in that moment saw Friedman as being an ideologue himself and perhaps he was but but now bernie's the octogenarian lecturing young people on college's campus so anyway uh a picture of someone who is an ideological opportunist is what i want to talk about next so someone who is an ideological opportunist in our world right now is most certainly and without a doubt donald j trump and maybe this will win me some points back from the bernie crowd if you stayed on to listen but it's so incredibly clear to me and i think that it was it was really pretty clear to many people even long before the election that Donald Trump is not a conservative person. Politically, he was a Democrat until about 10 minutes before he came down the escalator in Trump Tower in 2015. And that could really be the end of the necessary rationale for this example. But even now, in the last few weeks, we've seen him forego typical Republican stances on things like amnesty and health care reform in favor of what House and Senate minority leaders would have him do. He sees this as an upper hand because he can tout the mantle of being bipartisan, being willing to compromise, and all the while he maintains his own personal self-image of a deal maker and a person who is just foremostly interested in getting things done and checking things off the list and all that. So, If some contemporary examples aren't doing it for you, then perhaps consider some ones from history for an example of an ideologue really just 
pick any dictator from the last hundred years or so because they were men who were sold out to ideology so significantly and they were standing upon them so firmly that they lost their ability to govern justly if that was ever something that they even saw as worthy to strive for in the first place. But a, a great uh, historical example of an ideological opportunist, in my opinion, would be King Henry VIII of England. Even though his goal was not so much to win political points as it was personal vindication, the Pope wouldn't budge on the whole no divorce thing, so screw Catholicism and boom, Church of England, problem solved. That's still, to me, taking the opportunity to change your ideology for personal gain, which is back to the whole opportunist thing. So I hope that you can see how both of these extremes are not exactly desirable for us as individuals. To me, it really breaks down kind of like this. The, the ideologue side of the spectrum looks at reality and observes the way that it is in ways that it's not equivocal to the way that they view the world. In other words, they look at the way the world is and it's not lining up with their worldview. Or perhaps it's, it's not on course to become what they think that the world should be on course to become based on their ideology. In response to this observation of disparity, they set out to change the world. They seek to inspire others to think the same way that they do form a movement to change personal opinion or change legislation or whatever other means that they say that they that they they observe as being able to provide uh, their desired end on the other hand we have opportunists who see the world as a set of arbitrary rules that really don't mean anything and they're willing to accept any opinion or stance on any given subject so long as it gives them the means to the end that they are seeking to achieve Usually the end for the opportunist is more individualist rather than the ideologue who believes that their way of doing things would be the best for everyone and is generally more collectivist. Hopefully these things have given you some food for thought for this episode. Maybe you'd even like to get in on the discussion with your own opinions and you can do that. I would encourage you to go follow us on Twitter by searching at sound pod again, terrible name. I know. I'd like to get the sound arguments handle. Only you can help me get there. So the more traction this podcast gets, the more legitimacy I have to come to Jack at Jack on Twitter with the claim of, hey, I'm, I, I deserve to be verified and I deserve this handle. So go and follow at sound argue pod on Twitter. The show is also on Gab. If you prefer some alternative to, uh, to Twitter, you can find us at sound arguments on Gab. And as always, feel free to send us an email at soundargumentspodcast at gmail.com. We'll wrap it up for this episode with the big idea, which is this. It's not really good to be an ideologue or an ideological opportunist. Hopefully, you at least took that much away from the show. We really ought to seek to be a moderate on the ideological spectrum. We should take an honest evaluation of what we believe be willing to compromise when sound arguments are presented to us that make a case for the other side. And at the end of the day, if we were able to wake up and seek to be people who change, grow, and learn for ourselves, as opposed to seeking to change the world to fit our own views, we're going to be that much more well-rounded and free-thinking individuals, which I believe is definitely worth the effort. That's all for this episode. This has been the Sound Arguments Podcast. Thanks for listening. And as always, be sure to subscribe on iTunes and on YouTube, and we will talk to you next time. <laughs>